guys welcome to today's video uh, this is actually today's second video so if you haven't seen the other one it's about um, over a decade's worth of sketchbooks you can check that one out and then this one is about all my watercolor palettes so um, the kind of middle section of this video I filmed before Christmas last year so like right here you can see this was kind of my collection of um, watercolors up until Christmas and then I will add in a couple more things at the end that kind of show um, where I'm at today so hopefully there is a lot of variety here and some inspiration to kind of show you um, what kind of things that you can uh, use as you know as the actual palette itself how you can fill them and you know sizes and affordability and all of that kind of thing so um, yeah in the last video I did talk a little bit about how I started watercolor and kind of show you through my sketchbooks there and I started very very basically with um, a Winsor & Newton 12 half pan student grade set and the the like plastic kind of tray of artist loft five dollar paints from the shimmer kind of shimmer color ones from Michaels so very very basic and I really really loved that and I had those for several years and then I started collecting palettes so um, yeah so I've been getting quite a lot of questions lately about making palettes and things like that so we'll do another video in two weeks so I'm doing uh, videos every two weeks on Saturday um, yeah, about building a palette but today I'm just going to show you through so this is the first one I'm going to show you it's a very large one um, it's a called color around or RTM and I'll try and link all these below or at least list them if there's no link but um, you can get smaller versions of this so really portable ones and then this is a really large one and um, I really really loved this palette so I'll show you kind of how I filled it um, in a minute but um, you can see that I always had like other little palettes and things in the actual mixing area so I really love stacking my palettes and you can see that in any of my more recent videos I have um, palettes stacked inside each other on my desk but um, these are the Holbein I think it's the 100 set and this is what I used to fill the palette but you can see that quite a lot of the tubes there are still full so these five here are my most used and just my favorite um, Holbein's and yeah so I have since like repurchased them several times but most of the other ones there I just used this palette I actually used it for probably maybe over a year but I really really loved it um, you can see I made a little like dot card chart there to take you know um, take places and paint and then I also just made this uh, insert here so uh, just an insert for a travels notebook and I put this inside kind of a I think there's a video for this over on heirloom Lux, and I just um, got a Barnes & Noble uh, journal and then took the journal pages out and made a travels notebook and this uh, paper that is just the Walmart Canson paper and I just folded it in half and um, yeah put it in there so that I made you can see like I like painted the palette I did um, a color chart of the palette um, and here are the actual swatches um, of all the colors and you can see like even the um, I was working on like the color wheels there and again like this is where I was kind of starting to go more into um, artist grade and I didn't really know what I was doing it's pretty rudimentary but I was just really really enjoying it so um, we have a few other like different kind of some of my sister's paints some of mine and I'm just kind of trying things out you can see here like this was the Windsor and Newton um, palette that I had probably for five years or so I'd say like um, yeah and then I started to get like other tubes of colors from Michaels and just put those in there when one was empty and I you know wanted to try something else 
So here are the swatches for the Daniel Smith dot cards as well. And I don't have one to show you because I've since like cut mine up and used it and it's just it's completely used. But I would highly recommend getting a, either a Daniel Smith dot card or any I think that a few other companies offer them now as well. They're such a good um just really enjoyable and such a good resource to like figure out what colours you like and um, all of that so yeah and definitely um, it helps you to kind of you know like you can see like, how many reds there are on the side and how many yellows or browns and it really those little tiny subtle differences you know can make a big difference in your painting so um, yeah then um, just kind of showing you here this is the brush that I normally use a number six um, there's a number six a Skoda but um, these wells you can see if you use larger brushes they're so good for that so very easy to um, be able to get you know get the brush in there and yeah I just think it's a really nice palette it's quite lightweight for the size of it as well so if your paints come off you can just uh, wet the bottom of the pan and then stick them down and then they'll just um, you know go back on there so so that's my first palette and you can see here I'm going to show you like uh, a lot of the palettes that I'm using now are you know less than a quarter of the size so they're quite small compared to that palette um, and so that's the thing that you kind of one of the things that you're looking for is the size you know uh, do you, you know do you want to put it on your desk or do you need to put it somewhere where there's not much room or um, you know different things like that but I highly recommend those palettes they're really beautiful um, okay so this next one here is a Schmincke pastel box and I got this off Jackson's and um, I just put watercolors in it so I didn't do any special coating to the box you can you know wax it or stain or seal it or something like that but I just um, started using it and I got a little ceramic plate there and then I basically took the tray out of a really cheap 48 pan palette and I have just um, put all the colors in there and then I used the um, sort of little metal insert from the Schmincke palette um, and so you can see they're just from one of those Schmincke palettes and then I actually I think since this video I did get another little tray for the other um, the purple colors there so yeah it's a really lovely palette and I think that one of the important things whatever palette you choose is just that you want to use it so every time you can see like here are the colors that are in that palette so every time I open these palettes I do want to start painting and I think that's the most important thing is just that it's inspiring for you and it works you know in whichever way you need it to work so a lot of these colors I actually um, I kind of once I had kind of grown it took me a couple of years to collect all these and then once I kind of started using them and realizing which ones I was using more and which ones I was gravitating towards I kind of um, went down you'll see the next palette I went down in size again and I didn't necessarily want to um, repurchase all these so if I was running out of them or something I you know I wanted just um, keep enough of the paint there so that if I ever need it for a painting you know it's there so this is the next palette that I um, curated and this one is a little whiskey pa painters palette so I got this one off Amazon several years ago for twenty dollars but I think they are at least double that and um, this was actually one that you that holds tubes it didn't hold half pans and so I actually just got my brother to pry the little metal part for the tubes out and you can see there like the back um, 
yeah so anyway but it, that didn't bother me as long as just the top was fine and then I could actually squeeze quite a few I think there's like 32 half pans in there or something like that so I condensed my palette down to like my favorite most used colors and then I had this kind of complementary palette which is the neutrals palette and you can see it had a lot of shimmers um, these four actually came in the palette. It was a limited edition Schmincke Gold one from Jackson's. It's a, it was a beautiful palette, so I highly recommend uh, messaging them to see if they're going to have it back in stock. I, I know they've restocked it a few times, but yeah, that was a really beautiful palette. And then I just um, took the metal tray out and again just uh, put a bunch of uh, half pans in there. So then this one is my current studio palette. I do have swatches for this one on the channel and the, the previous ones. And um, this one is from Amazon. It was a $20 enamel palette uh, from Meaden. And so this goes in and out of stock. So I will try and link it below. Um, and yeah, I really enjoy this palette. So this is kind of what's in the palette. But... Um, also the little I I really um hold on okay so I just um went and filmed a little bit more to put in some footage of the a question that I get asked quite a lot about this palette um so this is currently how it is on my desk and you can see these little metal parts here they actually usually go in the side here to hold like that side down and then um, you know there's quite a large part in the middle for brushes but I actually just put them into the middle part on the either side of the um, half pans and then that seems to hold everything snugly everything doesn't move around too much so yeah so this next palette is like the little compliment one to this studio palette this one is a schminker one and you can see like it's got this little flask here and you can put water in there and kind of hold like your own little water um, cup on the palette there so this one uh, I rotate things in and out of if I get new colors and I want to try them out I'll put them in this one and kind of leave that on my desk so that I have access to them and yeah this is another one that's the same palette but um, I have been making a a palette that's kind of my own version of I call it like the old masters palette so so this one is not historically accurate it's just a representation of how I kind of feel about um, their paintings so this is a very tiny palette this is a, a again a whiskey painters one and this one is kind of I guess my first one that I curated in this style so it's like the it's like deeper colors that kind of really moving um, feeling but you can see that, that I have added some shimmer colors and yeah so I am like I said it's not historically accurate but um, actually Katie from KW Arts is creating a historically accurate one and I can imagine it's going to be really really beautiful um, so you can see here that I have quite a lot of Wallace and Seymour uh, paints in this one Chinabrasa that's one of my favorites Citadella Grey Schist and you can see like the texture on that I really really love to add um, that kind of thing to this palette so um, yeah just creating like more depth and movement in the watercolor also sometimes these Wallace and Zimmer ones come and they're dry so you can't actually squeeze them out so I, I just cut the back and then kind of uh, put it into the you can see here like I've kind of put it like I've scooped it out with like a knife and then put it in there and then wet it until it kind of all goes into shape I had to do the same thing with the um, the shimmer iron glimmer but since when you know once it's in the palette and then you wet it and leave it to re-wet for a while they they work really well so um yeah and I'm just kind of showing you this is how I fill the pan so sometimes I get questions so any question that you have is not a silly question I always run out of 
um, time to kind of explain things and that. So, yeah, always feel welcome to, you know, ask anything. It just might take me a minute um, to respond, but yeah. So I love hearing from you guys and your feedback and questions. They're always welcome. So, um, yeah, this is kind of me playing around with those colours that I am putting into the um, Old Masters palette and kind of just trying to find my way. Like you can see these colours are a little bit more muted than what I normally use, but I really, really love them. And I think that's part of the thing that we love about those old paintings is that they just they can create feelings that are really um you know deep and meaningful kind of but um I don't know just in a really moving way so yeah this is um a Sennelier palette and I have this little da Vinci brush travel brush in here which I really love um I have two videos about this palette so one I am painting with the colors that it comes with and showing you how to mix them and things and then one I'm showing you what I actually put in there and then okay so then this one is um, sort of a second this is a, a brand new plein air palette that I put together so we'll actually probably swatch this one in the next um, video we'll, we'll talk about palette building and yeah we'll swatch this one so these are kind of colors that I've come to that um, I don't want to say more sophisticated but more you know your taste grows and changes and I still love this palette so you can see it's a lot brighter I really like to start with the bright and clear colors so that I can mix them and mute them you know specifically the way I want to but um, I do really love this kind of more moody palette. So yeah, I put that one together there and I was just showing you that what is in the little bottle is the Schmincke Bronze. And then these, these are the colors that are in the Sennelier palette. So um, yeah, I, I did get a few questions about like the little, the little bottles in the palettes and we'll talk about those more as well. But um, so this is another idea for a plein air palette so this is the beam paint squash travel palette or travel card and I think that's just a really really beautiful way to uh, just very simply take some colors with you um, so this here is a palette this is the artist row palette it is I think around $20 on Amazon is what I paid for it so it comes with a little bit of paper it comes with some brushes and things which I haven't touched um, and then this is the palette so I actually took the brushes out and you can see that I have moved the plastic palette that was in there to the top of the um, the top of the palette and it stays in there quite snugly you can you know close it and it and it all fits fine and then in the bottom I have um, put handmade palettes so I'm just showing you here or handmade watercolor so I'm showing you here that like while you're collecting it's a really nice palette if you're starting somewhere the palette itself is nice and then you can start building you know a little collection from there so while you're kind of building that collection you can use some of the other room to put some of the brushes and things like that in there as well and so when this palette is finished we will swatch this one out as well a lot of the colors in here are from the shops that I mentioned in my five uh, top favorite watercolor video so yeah those are, those are still my favorite shops and then you can go to that video and um, all the links are there and, and pretty much these all come from um, those shops and yeah the, the palette itself is really lovely there is no you can see here so this is kind of how it's expanded at the minute but there's no mixing space so that is something to consider if you need mixing space um, you can also use like a ceramic plate or something like that as well you know to the side so you don't have to have a mixing space you know in your specific palette so yeah this is about five years worth of collecting watercolors so you know you definitely do not have to go out and um, go crazy there are a lot of really nice options for just starting out slowly and building your collection over time 
you know, over a year or two. And um, I have a lot of videos, you know, on the channel kind of highlighting different shops and colors and color mixing and things like that. So hopefully you can kind of narrow down um, the types of colors that you would be interested in. Um, yeah, and I just think it's really nice to always like have a main palette and then have a little another little palette that um, just kind of complements it. So at the minute I am holding them all in this, actually it's a knitting project bag. And yeah, I just have all of like those palettes that I just showed you in there. So one thing I would recommend is always let your watercolors dry before you close your palette so you don't end up with mold. Um, but here you can see as well, like this is the the little Sennelier palette today. So it's, it's different again. Um, here are two little tins. So again, like you can use little Altoid tins. These are little tins from Ocean Paper. And so this one here has six of their colors in in here. And again, I, I, I like to sort of curate these little palettes as, um, and then here's like a purple one. So I like to put colors in there that I think will complement other, other palettes. So if I have out, you know, a particular larger palette, I have kind of a few different options. If I need a different color, I can just pull out one of the smaller palettes to go with it. Okay, so this is a another Whiskey Painters palette. This one's from Etsy, so you can see it's a white palette. It's a really beautiful palette and it came empty, um, but then it also came with like full pans, half pans. They all have magnets. They're really nice quality half pans so you can really um, customize it and then I have you can see like the gold ink would go in the little bottle there and the um, Schmincke bronze goes in the little the kind of brown one so so those I just got off Etsy they're called I mean, not Etsy Amazon so they're called quarter dram that's the measurement um, little like they're like little essential oil bottles um, I'll try and link those below as well and, and then you can see that little palette that was the little whiskey painters one and it has some Isero colors some of my colors and um, again there was the little little bottle the dropper bottle with the Winsor Newton gold ink in it so those are always like freebies with my um, orders so this one here is a silver tray and I have sold some of these as high tea palettes and I highly recommend um, you can go on Etsy and look up um, silver butter trays or silver, you know, silver trays and um, yeah, make a little beautiful palette like this. So it doesn't have to be expensive watercolors, but something like this will really inspire um, just creativity and just, I think, beauty during, you know, during the day. So uh also i'm just showing you here the pearls the pearls are watercolor so you just use them like watercolor you may have to leave them a minute to re-wet and then i always try and pair them with a color underneath that will like either complement it or maybe um, you know you wouldn't have thought of mixing those colors together so just to get that creativity going as well um, and then I'm just using the, which is this, a Technalo, Caran d'Ache Technalo pencil um, here. I really love just, you know, adding a little bit of pencil. So this is my favorite, um, one of my favorite watercolor pencils, but I have been really enjoying this one at the minute. It gives you kind of that little bit more of the um, dark earthy colors. Then these are my two souffle palettes. So again those have been in the shop and then this one is um yeah high tea palette my high tea palette so these are the colors that i actually sold in the last update so we will talk about those at towards the end of the video but i hope you guys enjoy them i ended up yeah doing like a lot a lot of work and i, I think they've come out really beautifully so um yeah so when i uh, the I'll show you kind of some footage in a minute, but the when I um, showed them 
before the shop for the shop update um, I, I feel like I was a bit rushed to get to the video and I, I hadn't kind of fully you know fully done it how I exactly wanted it and so I am really grateful that you guys could see the you know see that inspiration there and um, yeah I, I think in that video I only showed like five pearls so I ended up um, 11 of the 16 colors have pearls and then a couple of the others have like you can see like the little I was really inspired by um, the chocolate guy I'm not sure of his name but my sister always really likes his um, you know things that he creates so um, yeah like like I wanted to do these little shards of kind of watercolor um, and sort of garnish the watercolor like a little chocolate and um, yeah I, I'm just so happy so you can see like I put extra little shells in the souffle palettes here and I also put those extra little shells in the splash palettes so I did quite a lot of extra things like I marbled the splash palettes and yeah everything just seemed to take like even I marbled the freebies and um, I added like some of those little shells extra so every kind of extra thing just took you know extra time but I think they just came out so beautifully and I feel like um, I was just looking at them like this and I would love to have a shop like um, Laudere but behind the counter are like all these little watercolor goodies that you can buy and then like sit in the cafe and paint and yeah how nice would that be but anyway um so yeah I hope you guys love these I think the last thing that I have to do is to um, put the gold ink in the little eyedroppers and then you know package everything up and send it off oh I have to write everyone's name on the little name cards as well so I think and you can see like some of the freebies but I think that um the next shop update so I wasn't going to do one for a while I've had quite a few questions um, and so I will try and do a few mini sets for the next video so in two weeks um, and I'll see I will put a comment I'll pin a comment to this video if anything changes like if I can't do it I'll, I'll you know postpone that um, but there are three little like five sets so half pans or full pans that I'd like to do one is dreamy landscapes one is the mermaid rouge the reds and then one is midnight in Paris with like some smoky lavender greys kind of my like dove grey kind of palette so you can see here this is the one that I showed you guys in the video and then they sold out pretty much immediately and then yeah I just really wanted to say thank you and you know to make them really beautiful and I think they just turned out I'm actually glad I was going to put um, six sets of each instead of four and wow I'm really glad I just did four um, so yeah so thank you for seeing the vision even though it wasn't fully realized in that video and oh, the other thing I wanted to say is I think in the next like I might do you know if this um, depending on how much I can get done for the next update I might just do two really small ones just maybe with you know three five pan sets or something like that I'm, I'm not really sure so we'll just see I'll just take it slowly and um, you can see the little shells there can go in your palette as well so um, I made those tiny shells with the tiny pearls and I think they're just really lovely um, but yeah so I might I'm just gonna um, also go a bit slower on the freebies so because th I think they're taking me like two weeks on their own so yeah um, anyway so yeah it was really enjoyable to create them for you oh the other thing was I got one of these Sennelier uh, pebble pastels in the blue and look at that color so yeah okay it has been um, a lot I hope you enjoyed the la if you haven't seen the last video you can check that out and then 
um, yeah, I will keep you updated on the shop updates and then you can, you know, ask me anything. I'll try and I'll be replying to comments, you know, until Monday. So um, I still have some comments like from the last video, so I apologize about that. But I hope you guys have a really lovely weekend. I'm just going to leave you with a little bit of footage from the other morning. It was so beautiful. Um, yeah, I feel like I was like, I feel like the, this is the kind of feeling that I actually want to be able to paint at some point. So anyway, we'll see how that goes. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Hopefully the next video will be palette building and um, yeah, we'll talk about a few different things. So, okay. Uh, bye for now.